Hello. Today we're going to try out some budget bottles in celebration of my finally joining the rest of YouTube in starting a Patreon. Um, I do this for, for two reasons. Um, the first one is, is uh, really kind of, I've, I've been thinking about it just in terms of like accountability. Like I figure y'all can trust me more if you are paying me to do these things. Um, so that's just me fascinated with the history of wine advocate and, and, and consumer adv advocacy forums like that. But the other part of it is a little bit more practical. Um, uh, my wife and I work full time and we've got two small kids, both of whom are now going to daycare. And the price tag on that in total is around about $3,600 a month, which is more than I, you know, make um, in a month. Uh, so we're kind of bleeding money right now. Um, now, uh, in a civilized and, and sensible state, a good part of daycare expenses would be taken over by, you know, the government, not just for, you know, ethical reasons, but, you know, it's good economic policy to not penalize people for, uh, you know, expanding the, the, the future job force and, and stuff like that, uh, and not uh, and nudging people to step out of the job force to, you know, be child caretakers. Um, but unfortunately, that we, we live in uh, uh, the current United States, which is this nightmare cocktail of, like, post-capitalist feudalism meets Weimar Republic meets Franz Kafka. And uh, we're on our own, pretty much. So um, uh, we're going to be okay. We're going to be a lot better than other families in our, in our situation. We have savings to fall back on. But that does make you look kind of pretty hard on your, at your budget and particularly on extravagant booze expenses. So um, my hope is that I can justify continuing to make this, these videos a little, bit, a little bit better if I have a little bit of income coming in from them. So that's why I'm, those are the two reasons why I'm doing this. Um, and to celebrate my, my new poverty, uh, we're gonna go through and, 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 and try some stuff you should be able to buy uh, under 30 bucks and see what's the best. Now, my going theory on this is that it's gonna be the American whiskeys that win. A uh, little background on this. Um, so uh, the the shtick of this channel has been to kind of push people away from, or not, not push people away, but kind of gently nudge people uh, to experiment beyond whiskey and particularly, uh, you know, um, American whiskey. And that can kind of sound like bourbon bad. That's not, that's what, not what I think. I think, Bourbon good. I, I am kind of, I have deep concerns about the culture and the craze that has kind of, you know, grown around certain corners of, of the American whiskey world. Uh, you know who shares my opinion on that? Whis American whiskey drinkers. Um, uh, but I, I certainly don't, don't hate bourbon or, or rye. In fact, I, I respect them enormously because I think you know, if you have 30 bucks, my, my suspicion is you can't do a whole lot better than some of the stuff in the American whiskey section. So we're going to test that. Uh, we're going to test that theory by putting two American whiskeys up against a whole smorgasbord of other stuff. I have a scotch, a brandy. The brandy is very interesting. And three rums. Um, now, I will say as another caveat, um, for me, the QPR champions of the world right now are unaged rums. Like, uh, I, I, I know for a fact, actually, that... Uh, Ray and Nephew Overproof or any of those others I've talked about would absolutely wipe the floor with and with all of these But it wouldn't be really very fun to watch that Would it because if you if you're if you subscribe to this channel, you probably already know uh, So we're gonna we're gonna leave those aside Leave those as the undisputed champions and and see if put in a fight for second place here So I've already poured everything so you don't have to suffer through <laughs> watching me awkwardly manhandle bottles in this rather crowded lineup here and uh, let's just get started. Um, okay, so we're kicking off with Old Tub, uh, unfiltered, bottle and bond, um, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is uh, basically the high, or I'm sorry, high corn, low rye, Jim Beam mash bill, um, 
presented in 100 proof form. Um, now, I, I kind of realized as I was setting this up that I've never actually reviewed a one of the low rye uh, beam whiskeys on this channel before, which I'm very upset at myself for doing because I kind of I, I like that lineup. On the no I'm, on the nose of Old Tub here. Okay. Uh, before I start with 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 distinct notes, I'm gonna say, especially like if if you're a bourbon nerd out there, um, when people when when bourbon folks think about the the character of bourbon distillate white dog, um, they tend to think about mash bills, right? They tend to think about that first. When you know something like this, though, I I would encourage you to also be thinking about still strength. I mean, also think about yeast, but yeast is, not, is a totally different topic, totally different topic. Um, but think about still strength. I mean, so imagine like a spectrum uh, running from like, uh, so at the, at the far end of the spectrum, you have like Buffalo Trace and um, Dickel, right? The, uh, Dick, Dickel distills right around 80 to, to right around 80% alcohol. They're all using these big, you know, fat industrial column stills, but... Dickel is the one that distills right up to the legal limit of what you can kind of, um, uh, what is acceptable in, you know, uh, American bourbon or, or rye or Tennessee whiskey. Um, right below that, you have uh, Buffalo Trace distilling to the mid-70s, around 75%. Um, and then sort of at the other, the, uh, the far extreme other end of that spectrum, you have Wild Turkey distilling to... Basically, the mid to low 60s. It's around they, their stuff comes off on the still, comes off the still a little bit above barrel strength. It comes off at like 125 proof or something, uh, really, really low, which gives it a very distinctive character. And then you have Heaven Hill kind of right in the middle at 70, and then you got this. You've got Jim Beam stuff, kind of right in between Turkey and and Heaven Hill. They distill to kind of the mid to high 60s. Um, and that makes a difference. Um, like, it just, I mean, mash bills are very similar between a lot of these distilleries, right? But you can take a bottle of, I don't know, Buffalo Trace, uh, or a glass of Buffalo Trace, set it beside a glass of um, Bean Black Label, nose and taste in each of them, and you will you will see the differences. It just from just from still strength, the 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 trace will be much brighter, much cleaner. Um, it will tend to sh to show less wood for its relative to its age at least um whereas the the beam distillate will come across as showing more wood than you would expect from its age it will come across as dirtier earthier grungier um, more herbaceous and more nutty and that's really what i'm getting on the nose of this it's just tons and tons of like nuttiness this might also explain why, you know, your your dad really, really loves Buffalo Trace, is kind of meh on Heaven Hill, and is absolutely disgusted by Turkey 101. You know, just a theory. Just a theory. Okay, so I'm getting tons of nut notes. It's really more kind of nut shells. Well, there is like a like a kind of nutty mashness on this. So so we're talking like burned nut shells, but then like also some like crushed almonds or and peanuts. Almost an orgeat note. It, it, yeah, there's a little bit of a floral thing, like a little, almost a little like rose water character in this. There's some herbaceousness going on. Um, a little bit of parsley, hint of dill. And remember, this is only like, what is what is the, the standard bean mash bill? Like 12-ish percent rye? It's not necessarily that there's more rye in this. It's it's just that because it's coming off the still at lower strength, you're getting more of the graininess. And there is a graininess uh, aspect to this too. There's a kind of like burned cream of wheat kind of carrot. Like you you were boiling cream of wheat and you just kind of left it on there for like 20 minutes and then it just kind of turned to, turned into gunk. Uh, definitely some vanilla, some um uh German Kirschwater, um, Wasser, I should say. So, cherry eau de vie. Um, just some, just some dirt, some kind of topsoil mud thrown in there. 
Um, vanilla, again, a touch of sawdust. I actually think this is, I mean, this is not expensive. It's sort of mid-20s price-wise, but I actually think this is relatively old. I would I would guess that, that maybe there's like five, six-year-old stocks in this. I mean, it's, it's bottled and bond, so it all has to be roughly the same age, but... I'm, I'm getting some age on the nose of this. Um, it hasn't been in there long enough to start developing tertiary notes. Maybe there's a little bit of like autumn leaf kind of character going coming through, but that's about it. And maybe like some Manuka honey too. It's a nice nose. Um, it is a lot grungier than what is typically in fashion with bourbon these days, but I'm kind of into that. On the palate. Very nice, actually very nice. Okay, so this is this is in a, in a dangerous price point because it's kind of competing with, you know, stuff like um, a little bit more expensive than this is OGD one fourteen, which I adore, and a little bit less expensive than this is Turkey one hundred one, uh, which I also adore. So this is in, this is in a dangerous place, but I got to tell you, I don't think this is this is losing by knockout to those guys. Um, it might actually be be hanging with them a little bit. Yeah, so again, we're getting tons and tons of nuttiness, like nutshells, ash, um, cooperage notes, like I'm like I'm chewing on um, just like burned oak chips. Um, but then there's also this kind of like muddled mint sort of character, this greenness, um, a little uh, toasted corn kind of thing going on, a little elote. Yeah, kind of like a, a, a corn sour element going on in this. Not a whole lot of cherry, lots of vanilla. Um, kind of like that that dirt aspect again, which I'm enjoying. I'm gonna come through back through this uh, after adding a little bit of water. I don't think I'll add water to the rest of these, but I will definitely add water to the first two and come back to them. But I gotta say, I mean, this is. This is impressive for the price point. I mean, like 20, 25 odd dollars. This is nice. Um, it's two squares. It'll probably take three, but let's do two and a half for right now. I mean, it's not, you know, um, beam at its top, top best, right? This is not you know, Booker's circa 10 years ago, but I'm really enjoying this. Okay, let's move on to uh, Turkey 101, rye this time. Um, I actually had this in an earlier video. This was in the uh, the um, Blank and Coke experiment that I did last year, and I said I would, I would eventually review it. I haven't so far, but so this is a good time, as good a time as any. This is here representing the, uh, the rye slot. I think this is uh, so a couple things right up front. This is a little bit stronger. It's 101 proof versus 100. But I do think it's actually younger. Look at that color. Um, I do not think this has been an oak nearly as long as the old tub. Um, but because this is a rye, that's not obligatorily the, the, a bad thing. This, is, this has to be a little bit more about the distillate, right? Okay, so wild turkey rye. Uh, barrel char number four, 50.5% alcohol, yada, yada, yada. All right, let's uh, let's get stuck into this. On the nose, it's actually a, a, a more quiet nose than I would have expect, would have expected. Um, definitely. Uh, so there is some herbaceousness coming out. Um, some like just uh, you know that sound, you, the, the smell you get when you're like pulling weeds in a garden, that kind of just like green slash herbaceous kind of note. That's sort of what I'm getting. It's it's weeds mixed with like peppermint, mixed with a little bit of basil, hint of dill, a little bit of uh, that um, turkey 
fermentary sourdoughiness slash floral character, but it's really sort of blown out by the, the vegetal character. And even that really isn't coming through that, that loudly. You expect this to be a louder nose than something like the old tub, but it's actually the other way around. This is more, it's more restrained. Some black pepper coming through. Um, not a whole lot of vanilla, not a whole lot of, of fruitiness either. Maybe a hint of like banana peel happening. I don't know. It's I don't know about this. It's um I'm a huge turkey fan, but I'm not so sure about at least on the nose of this. And kind of just kind of a generic kind of grainy note, like um like uh, I often refer to to uh, Baltic black bread, so really dark, thick uh, sourdough rye bread. I'm kind of getting that, but uh, it's a, it's sort of a subdued nose. All right, on the palate. Okay. Okay, I do like the palette better. Um, still feels just a hair bit basic to me. Um, so the, the, the main competition for this bottle is going to be something like Rittenhouse, right? And I do think I like this better than Rittenhouse, but... It's not really stepping up to impress me. Um, so I'm getting some nice kind of candied grain notes almost as if you took some like if you could make like cr cream of wheat candy uh and getting some of that there's a little bit of like uh just um uh it tastes a little bit like like an old-fashioned actually like like you put a little bit more more sugar and bitters in your in your uh, old-fashioned than you'd like and that's really what's coming through Um, some white pepper, some kind of, I don't know, generic woody charness. Hmm. I was, I'm a little bit puzzled by this because again, it's not, it's not bad by any means, but it's just, it isn't speaking very much. It's, it's a little bit, little bit like, um, trying a, a like a, a young wine that isn't necessarily a big tannic monster but it's just kind of shut down a little bit that's kind of what i'm getting on this yeah grain candy a little ash a little bit of um a little bit of a floral thing i'm gonna fill this up a little bit more um but that's and and, and kind of a what is that? Like a like a basic kind of burned Brussels sprout kind of thing. Um, not bad by any means. In fact, I, I'm kind of I'm okay with this. Like if I had spent my money on this and I just wanted to, you know, drown it in Manhattan's or something, I would be to on, on budget budget Manhattan's. I mean, I would be absolutely okay with this. But um, I think it's actually lost a little bit in the shadow of the old tub, which I was not expecting. Let's give this a couple of squirts of water. And uh, let's say two and a half again. Yep, yep, that's about right. Um Yeah, okay, so so only two two glasses in and I'm I'm already a little bit puzzled. Okay, moving on to the uh uh Ah, here we go. I finally got a bottle of this. Johnny Walker, Red Label, Blended Scotch Whiskey. Um, bottled circa probably, I, I don't know, uh, there's a lot number on this. I can't really read it in this light, but I would imagine bottled circa 2021, 20, 22, somewhere in there. Um, this is around $20. So actually less expensive than these two. Uh, bottled at 40% alcohol. One of the most widely available spirits in the world. Um, so let's see if it's any good. Okay. Okay. The nose actually isn't too bad. 
So usually with these kind of cheaper blends, I'm, I'm worried about getting a lot of grain alcohol because that's the majority of what's there. I'm worried about getting kind of vodka notes. Um, you, you know what I mean? But I'm not getting vodka notes on this. It just kind of smells like a, like an apple. Yeah, it smells like an apple that's been kind of smoked. So take an apple, throw it in a, in a like a, an, above a peat fire for about, not for very long even, like two minutes. Take it out, smell it. This is kind of what you're getting. Yeah, smoky apple and that's kind of it. Hints of, hints of barley here and there. It's very vague. It's very... It's not throwing any off notes at me. It's just, it's just simple. Actually, I mean, that, that's about the best I can describe it as. It's simple. Um, okay, on the palette, uh oh, ooh. Okay, so first off, I do feel the, 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 the hop to 40% alcohol, that hurts a little bit, but hurting that hurting this more than that is the grain alcohol that was not so present on the nose is starting to show up on the palate. Um, especially in the back end, you just kind of get this kind of gross, you know, ethanol-y sort of character uh, happening. It just kind of, it arrives fine. The arrival is quite pleasant. It's very fruity. There's a little, again, kind of like a like a gentle smoked thing, um, kind of providing a halo to the fruit. And then it kind of, the finish, yeah. Let me try this again. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're, we're arriving on like, um, Kind of a okay so to, to take an apple take you know really take apple sauce let's say take apple sauce and you're gonna kind of take your uh, your chef's torch kind of char it up a little bit um, and then you're gonna basically put it in a in a uh, in a kiln with some peat smoke for about five minutes pull it out that's kind of what this tastes like on the arrival and then it kind of uh, the as it transitions into the finish, you kind of get a little bit more white pepper, and then those kind of like vodka slash ethanol notes kind of start to come out. It's still not too bad. You know what? You know what? I said I wasn't going to add water to the rest of these. I am going to add water to the rest of these. I'm calling an audible because I want to see what happens. When I, add, when I add water to this stuff, because I imagine it's going to bring the grain out a little bit more. So I'm going to add like two, literally two drops, and we'll come back to it. At the moment, I, I will be honest, this is kind of neck and neck with the, the Dewar's White Label for me. Uh, in fact, I might actually prefer the Dewar's, um, but I kind of want to see what, what happens with this with water uh, before I make a final call. Okay, moving on to uh, uh, our, our first whiskey alternative. This is... Grammy XO, which is a Georgian brandy. Uh, I don't really know anything about this. What I can tell you is, um, a I can't buy it in Chicago, but a bottle of this elsewhere where you can buy it costs $8. $8. Uh, it is marked as a, a circa 10 year old blend, bottled at 40% alcohol from Georgia again. Um, and so on paper, um, this should be a, a little bit of a value. Like it's a circa 10 year old brandy, $8. Um, you can't even get a decent vodka for that. Um, I'm sorry, I, 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 just, I, I just nosed this. It actually smells quite, quite nice. Um, anyways, on, so on paper it looks good. My instinct tells me to run as far away from a bottle like this as possible, but but, I mean, this might actually... Oh my god. No way. No way. Okay, okay, so, so what I'm getting here... Okay, so I'm getting some uh, some really classic brandy notes. We're getting 
um, like caramelized raisins. So take some raisins, throw them in a frying pan with some some caramel, um, and kind of like get get those all all uh, all together. But there's a mint note on this happening too, like um, like a spearmint kind of character. That's actually a, a very solid nose. Holy crap. Okay, but the what I you know where these things tend to fall apart when they're at forty percent is on the palate, so that'll tell the tale. It's a very nice nose, actually. This for eight dollars, Jesus. Okay, on the palate, here we go. What I'm worried about is this being sweet, and and being thin, but really, but like. If the dosage is, is as annoying as I think it'll be, I might be wrecked for the rest of the session. We shall see. <coughs> um... Let me try that again. This is really solid. This is really solid. Eight dollars. Holy crap. Okay, you know, I was I was I was um hyping up the, the unaged rums and the and stuff when this started. And you know, yes, absolutely, they will wipe the table with this. But for $8, this this is absolutely terrific. Um, okay, so again, we're getting raisins, um, um, plum, um, uh, kind of some, some toffee, uh, honey notes, um, some flowers. I don't believe for a moment that color is real. But this is actually okay. Uh, the finish doesn't hang on that long. And kind of like, but it's also not sweet. I don't. If if there is dosage on this, it's not particularly you know egregious. It's not offending me. Um, it's very nice, fruity up front. There's a little bit of a of a coffee thing, like uh, like a, like cold brew coffee mixed in with the kind of dried fruity caramel notes, and then it just fades away on the finish. Um, Definitely not, not a, a, a top tier spirit by any means. But wow, I mean, we may have a new like QPR champion. If you walk into a liquor store with ten bucks, absolutely you should buy this. This is, I'm I am I am absolutely stunned by how good this is for, for the amount of money it costs. Um, well done, Georgia. And I can't actually believe this is a ten year old. Um, it's, I don't think this was, was aged 10 years in, like, fresh casks by any means. I'm not getting enough cask char character on this, but I could actually believe it was resting for a reasonable amount of time. Um, wow, okay, so that kind of puts the, the rums under the gun. Let's get going on these. Um, okay, so first off for the rums to uh, is the Panama Pacific 9-year-old. Um uh, bottled at a 47.3%. So this is from the um, uh, same distillery as uh, Grander and a whole bunch of other things. And I, what the heck was the name of it? Hold on. This is going to bug me, so I'm going to look it up. I have it in my notes. I thought I was going to remember all this stuff, but I am not. The Las Cabras Distillery in Panama, which uh, you will see many stories of people just wandering around in cane fields and just stumbling upon a gigantic distillery with a quadruple column still, um, which is very believable. Anyhow, uh, uh, Panama Pacific, they have a whole lineup. I did not enjoy the grander uh, uh, at all, really. I thought it was just kind of lame. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll give this an honest shot. You'll notice that uh, these two all, all come from Latin America, which I've kind of shortchanged in my, re in my reviews, Probably unfairly. Um, well, let's give this a shot. It is around, right around 30 bucks, maybe a hair over, but you should be able to get it for $29.99 without too much trouble. Okay. 
So it smells like a, a multi-column distilled rum, roughly in the Cuban style. So we're getting vanilla, lots of coffee, kind of like like old coffee grinds kind of notes. Uh, there's like a pencil eraser kind of thing going on. Pencil eraser and like like um, uh, pencil shavings. And a little bit of a rubber hint, uh, like a like a fresh tire hint that often comes out in, in column distilled rums. Light fruitiness, almost like a, a Pepsi sort of note, like a almost if you boil down Pepsi. And it definitely, so the, it's only bottled at, at 47 odd percent, but I'm actually get, getting alcohol, an alcohol lip nip on the nose that would suggest this is stronger than that. Um, so the heat is showing uh, uh, more than I would expect actually on the palate. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Um, it's not particularly exciting and thrill a minute. Um, there might actually be a hair bit of dosage in this, but not too much. Um, it's uh, it, it does get a hair bit syrupy on the back end, but that just could, could be the style. Um, okay, so we're talking again, vanilla, uh, lots of coffee notes. Coffee grinds, a little sweet tea. Um, uh, yeah, pencil shavings, pencil eraser, a little bit of rubber, so kind of following the nose. Hair bit of, um, there's something green in this, almost like a, uh, like a charred broccoli sort of note. It's very, it's very subtle, but it's kind of in there. It's really kind of shading into the tea note, so it's, maybe it's almost like a, um, uh, like a, burned tea thing more so than a burned um, vegetable thing. Hmm. Yeah, I do think this is dosed. I do think this is moderately dosed. Um, it's not too bad. It's not sort of offending me, but there's a little bit of a syrup syrupiness and a roundness in the mouthfeel that's kind of tipping me off a little bit. Um, still, between this and Diplomatico, the 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 uh, Reserva, uh, I would take this um, a million times over. Uh, I'm gonna give this like a squirt and a quarter. We'll come back to it. The color is is uh, pleasantly light. I I do not really believe this is nine years old. Uh, at least not tropically aged. I would guess maybe more like four or five. Um, at least that's that's the kind of sense I'm getting. If this was continentally aged, I could see nine years, but um, in the tropics, maybe not so much. Um, but they did find the distillery, you know, in a abandoned in a, in a cane field, so maybe they just had some some. Maybe the the nine year old rum is just interesting from there. Okay, moving on to, uh, this is a new one for me, uh, Ron Viejo de, de Caldas, Carta de Oro, uh, from Colombia. So right next door to, to Panama, and previously, of course, Panama was, was Colombia before um, other forces got involved. Um, so I have always had a soft spot for Colombian rum. I've never tried this one, and it may fall flat on me, but uh, I've always felt that Colombian rum was Okay, okay, so Latin American rum tends to get a bad rap in uh, rum nerd circles because they tend to be, you know, excessively premiumized with fancy bottles and boxes and stuff and bottled at 40% and with lots and lots of sugar and sh of sugar and other additives added. And I always found that, that Colombia was kind of, with the exception of, of, of Dictador, do not buy Dictador, do not buy Dictador, bad, jo bad juju, just don't do it. Stay, stay far away um uh they're not 
if, if reports are to believe they are not uh, really Colombian and they are not really rum, so stay away. But for the rest of the, the uh, Colombian rums, like I used, I had a bottle of like Medellin 8, which I really, really enjoyed. It wasn't the pr most profound thing I've ever had, but I didn't pay that much for it. And uh, it was honest, it was real. So I've always respected that. Um, so let's uh, let's give this uh, uh, Viejo de, de Caldas Carta de Oro uh, an honest shot. Quite an expensive this. I think this is around 20 bucks. And I like the nose. Um, ooh. Okay, so there's some floral stuff going on here. There's some like, um, really take some, take some RC Cola and then take like a, like a big bunch of wildflowers and stuff it into your bottle of, of RC Cola. And that's kind of what I'm getting. There's a little bit of, of coffee coming through. Um, really it's, it's, it's coffee grinds. It's like fresh coffee grinds. And I, ironically not Colombian. I would go Costa Rican coffee grinds. Fresh coat, fresh. And that's most of what's going on here. I'm, I'm still getting a hair bit of that sort of column distilled influence, that little hint of rubber, but it's much better hidden than in the, um, the Panama Pacific. This is a nice nose. Uh, so I, I, part of me wonders if this is not molasses based, if it's more of like cane syrup based, um, but I don't really know. It's lovely though. I would love, I mean, it's breaking my heart this is at 40% because I would love to smell this at like 43, 46, but you know, uh, we're going to roll with it on the palate. Ooh. Okay. Wow. This is this is actually quite good. Okay, so it, the forty percent is still it's it's not helping it. It is is um it is hurting this. But the the quality of this, the integrity of this is absolutely showing through. Um, it's not super complicated, um, but yeah, this is, this is, this is good. So we're, again, we're on like, we're on cola, um, meets like some floral notes. There's some, what is that? Almost like a, like a pound cake sort of note, like a, a pineapple upside down cake sort of note going on. Uh, a little bit of coffee grinds, but not too much. Um, hair bit of vanilla. This is right. I mean, okay. If if you are if you have, are walking out of the liquor store with a bottle of this, having spent it for twenty bucks, and you just you just needed something to you know spend your money on, and you didn't want to buy an old tub or whatever, you're doing okay. Um, I am, I am a little bit flabbergasted by how good this is. Well done, Colombia. Uh, let me give this like two drops of water and we'll come back to it. One, two. And, uh, okay. Finally, uh, this is something I've look, been looking forward to. Dorley's 12 year old. This is not a recent bottle. They've recently moved to 43%. This one's still 40. So I imagine this is again, a, a, an older bottle um, I think 2016, 17, somewhere in there. Um, Dorley's from the Four Square Distillery on Barbados. Uh, this is not the same stock as they're using for their uh, exceptional cast selection. This is uh, probably a little bit more column heavy, less pot still heavy, but uh, should still be fun. And uh, the rums are kind of showing up for me today. I was expecting them to not be super great, but uh, they're showing me a thing or two. Ooh, on the nose of this Dorley's 12. Okay, if there was, I'm, if I was getting a little bit of a cola thing on uh, the, uh, what was this? The Viejo de, de Caldas. I am getting cola, you know, cola mania on the Dorley's. 
I mean, this really smells like RC Cola. That's that's kind of what I'm getting. But really, like really super nice RC Cola. There's some honey mixed in with this. Um, a little hint of like uh, almost a French roast uh, coffee bean thing. It smells very can. There's a little a little black licorice. It smells very candied, but substantial. This smells. I mean, this is not being crippled by forty percent. This is actually, at least on the nose, it's coming through very nicely. A little prune, some some dried fruit. Um. Um, light molasses, cooking molasses. But overall, very aromatic, very uh, floral, but it's really like like cola floral, soda floral, more so than actual flowers, if that makes sense. Maybe a drop of rose water in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm into this nose. Okay, let's try it on the palate. Well, dang. Okay, this is this is good. This is quite good. Uh, it really makes me want to try a forty-three percent version of this. Um, it's not again. It's not super duper mega complicated, but the fundamentals are all there. Um, RC cola, a little bit of coconut, um, black pepper happening. Mm-hmm. Um, some coffee characteristics happening. More like more like French roast again. Uh, um, again, that that sort of cake, that sort of pound cake characteristic is coming through, one, once again. A um, little uh, kind of barrel ash on the back end. And the finish is actually quite substantial. It does not feel particularly thin. It does not feel. Like it's falling apart on me, like um, like the uh, the Johnny Walker was. Um, despite the strength on this, this actually holds together very very well, and I am uh, I am curious to see what it does with a little bit of water. Let's give that two drops. All right, so that finishes things. Um, uh, so <laughs> this okay. So these five have really, in some ways, shocked me. Okay, let's let's ignore the the bread label, which is about what I expected. Um, this Grammy is sort of a steal. This is kind of a thing. Um, and these rums are actually, with the exception of the Panama Pacific, which I'm, I'm beginning to like, I liked less and less as I, as I started to drink more of it. Um, these are showing up. These are good. All right, let's go back through. Starting with the old tub. Let's see what we got here. And we'll give these some scores. Mm -hmm. Gets more grainy. Uh, the old tub gets more grainy and kind of a little bit more peppery with with water. Um, it feels more aromatic, actually. There's a little bit more of a floral rose hint coming through. Like roses and a little lilac as well. But really, it's still all about the, the nuttiness and um, just that kind of grungy character that you get in, in um, low still strength kind of bourbons, which I appreciate. Uh, on the palate, I'm into this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so uh, it already had me on the on the on the the front end, and then the finish has kind of uh, has kind of sealed the deal for me. Uh, let's just say the development of this is with water is very good, and um, the the finish is quite substantial, and um, especially for the price point, wow, like twenty five bucks ish.
Okay, so on the palette, not a whole lot of development in terms of flavors, um, but it does feel the 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 mouthfeel does improve a little bit. It gets a little bit more spicy, and the finish is just kind of made a little bit more substantial, uh, a little bit more kind of aromatic too. Uh, the 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 ashy notes uh, kind of pull back a little bit, and we're getting sort of more herbaceous floral notes kind of hanging on on the back of the palate. I like this. Um, and uh, Shock of Shocks, I think I like this more than Turkey 101. The bourbon, I mean. Um, it is a little bit more expensive, but not that much more expensive. I don't know if I like this more than Old Granddad Bottle and Bond, which is around the same price point, but... Um, well, I don't like this as much as the 114. Um, I'm going to give this an honest 84 points. 84 points out of 100 for Jim Beam's Old Tub Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey Bottle and Bond. Uh, unfiltered for more, more robust flavor. Um, by the way, this is a very weird label. It does say Bottle and Bond, but it's way, way up top there. Do you see that? Like right above the Old Tub in this tiny print. I don't really get it. Um, okay, moving on to the Turkey 101 Rye, which I was a little bit mystified before with before because it didn't seem to be saying very much. But let's give this another shot on the nose. Still not saying very much. There's a little bit of a, of a lemon-lime component kind of coming out in the nose now. Uh, brown sugar. Otherwise, it just kind of still smells the same. A little bit of graininess, some honey, some gentle floral action, pepper. I have to say, I was expecting more from this. For for you know, given the given my respect for Turkey as a, as a distillery, I you know I was kind of hoping to see more from this, but. Um, not so much, at least on the nose. It's nice on the palate, though. Some nice kind of candied graininess, again, which, but that was there before. I mean, it really isn't developing on the palate, really. Um, let me give this one more shot. It's fine. I mean, I like this. It just, I'm left wanting more. Um, what this really, I feel like what this really needs is just more time in the barrel, which is something I do not usually say about American whiskeys. But in this case, I will. I would love to see this at just an older age, which I guess is what the Rare Breed Rye and the Russell's Reserve Rye are all about. Um, so maybe I should try those one of these days. At the moment, I'm going to give this an honest... Um, 82, 81. 81 points out of 100. It's nice. It's lovely. Um, particularly on the palate. I think this would hold up well in Manhattan if you were on a shoestring budget. And I do like this more than Rittenhouse. But, man, at this price point, I do think you can do better whiskey-wise uh, and sort of spirit-wise in general. Moving on. This is the reason why I started adding water to the rest of these, even though a lot of them are at 40%. Johnny Walker uh, Red Label. Let's see how much worse. So what I'm looking for is, is to see if this completely collapsed with two drops of water, which is what a lot of these blends will do. Um, so it hasn't completely collapsed. I'm getting a little bit more graininess or grain whiskey kind of you know, vodka ethanol components coming through in the nose. But it still just smells kind of like it did before, mostly what, like what it did before, which is kind of this kind of like peated apple sort of thing on the palate.
You know, actually, this does improve with water a hair bit. Um, I was getting some, some raw grain alcohol notes on the back end without water, but now with literally two drops of water, that, that suddenly kind of goes away and the kind of nice apple smokiness kind of carries through on the, on the finish. That's okay. That is definitely all right. Um, better than I was expecting, actually. So, oh, what do I give this? Uh, uh, I'm gonna give this, uh, so I, I had doers at like 76-ish. I wanna give this higher than that. Um, Cause I, I respect this for, for kind of showing up when I, when I challenged it with the drops, drops of water. I'm gonna give this like a 77 plus. Let's give this 77 plus. Not a great score. It is absolutely performed, uh, outperformed by the American whiskeys, but this is all right. I, you know, if if um, if I'm out in the boonies and this is literally like someone just gives me a glass of this, I'm okay. Like that's I can I can deal with that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna secretly pour it out. But, but, this Johnny Walker Red costs $20. And now we are moving on to something which costs $8. Uh, so we are back to the Grammy Georgian Brandy XO, uh, circa 10 years old. <laughs> and I am, every time I notice this, I am shocked. I am shocked that the fact that something that is $8 can smell like like this um nose hasn't really changed maybe it's a little bit more minty the the spearmint kind of character is coming kind of kicking in a little bit more a little bit more aromatic a hair bit more um of a kind of dried flower thing going on in the background behind the um the raisins and dried fruit and caramel kind of stuff but overall not a whole lot of change from where, what it was neat um on the palette And with water, it continues to behave. The water actually extends the finish. Uh, this was kind of fading on me when I was drinking it neat. But now with some water added, it's it's holding on with much more substance. Despite the fact that this is 40%. This is really solid. This is actually, extre this is extremely solid. Um, let's try this one more time. Um, it's really the same set of flavors. It's It's very traditionally brandy like it's 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 dried fruit caramel um that's that slight minty floral thing the main change with water is it the the finish kind of holds on a little bit longer this kind of nice um you know aromatic grape slash old wood kind of characteristic. I like this. Um, it's not blowing me away, but I'm gonna give it 80 plus points. And for $8, uh, I mean, this outperforms cognacs that cost five times as much money. And um, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Uh, this is awesome. I'm gonna to have to grab a bottle of this somehow, um, just to, just to shock people with what you can you can get from what the how can they charge eight dollars for this? Like, I have some idea of what it costs just to have glass and like to to ship stuff over from you know Eastern Europe, and I have no like how much money can they be spending on the stuff that's inside the bottle? I am flabbergasted. This is okay. No matter how good the rest of this stuff shows up, and like this is the the okay. Old tub is pretty good. Dorley is 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 lovely, but I mean this for eight dollars might be the star of the show. It might, it might be the star of this episode. 
Um, Grammy XO, y'all. Okay, let's move on to the uh, the Panama Pacific nine year old. Uh, I was a little bit torn on this one because it's it's it it was okay, but I also felt like it was a little bit uh, constructed, maybe a little bit dosed on the back end. Mm. And the nose, the problems start to appear. This on the nose, the it, this starts to smell almost like too sweet. It's it, it starts to smell like and like like cotton candy flavoring or something like that. It's it smells very chemically. So what's what's happened is the the water has kind of pressured this thing into be into kind of uh, the so now we have the the sweet confectionery notes which were fine before those 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 kind of cafe those kind of cold brew coffee notes are kind of now fusing with the more industrial notes the rubber the pencil shavings and it's kind of not nice um it just smells like sweet chemicals and the nippiness is still there which is bad because i've just brought this down uh to you know 41 42 percent from wherever it was before so 47 Roro. Okay, let's try this on the palette. See what happens. Uh oh. Okay. So with water, um, this is kind of collapsed on me. Um, so I'm getting. Oh. So the dosage is really creating some problems now. With the the, the, the dosage, the, the syrupiness on this kind of steps up. It kind of steps up a lot when you add uh, some water to this. So I'm really getting, um, yeah, I'm getting cola notes on this, coffee notes, some floral notes, and that's fine. But then there's just like this chemically sweetness. Especially in the back end, oh, that I do not like. Um, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. I hate the Diplomatico much more than I hate this. This is actually kind of, it doesn't feel, despite everything, despite my not really liking the flavors involved, it does feel substantial in my mouth. It does feel have a nice, decent mouthfeel. Um, I'm just not into it. I'm going to give this like a... Uh, like a 74 minus, something like that. 73 minus. Um, and that's kind of sad. I was, I, I was kind of hoping you could get like a really good, honest, like Cuban style rum out of this, that, that higher proof. But... Oof, no, no, no. Um, just, I mean, if you want a good human-style rum, go to Cuba. Or for that matter, maybe go to Colombia. I'm going to try this um, uh, Viejo de Caldas again. Okay, uh, here we go. We are returning to the... Uh, Carta de Oro, eight-year-old, at 40%. Now with two drops of water in it. I'm really hoping the Panama Pacific hasn't wrecked my palate. Let's see what I got. Uh, no real change on the nose with the Viejo, uh, with the viejo here. Yeah, real sm it really still smells like floral cola with some coffee mixed in. And I appreciate that. I, I, I appreciate, like, this just smells like like an honest rum. It's that, it's just, and it makes me appreciate, like, you know, like, like the Latin world, like Colombia especially, can do really, really good, honest rum. They can do spectacular rum, yeah, and then they can do just, like, you know, wonderful stuff to throw in a, a glass with some lime and 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 stuff um and here's an example of that 
and it's not sugared up and it's not fakey fake and and I appreciate it. I absolutely appreciate this, uh, especially after the uh, the previous entry uh, in this lineup. Lovely. On the palette with this uh, uh, Carte de, de Oro, I keep forgetting the name, I apologize. Um, Not a whole lot of development with water, but what's there is is very solid. Um, yeah, we're still on floral stuff, cola, coffee. That's really about it. But it works. It's honest and it's beautiful and it works. I would love to try this at, you know, Higher proof. I would love to try this with, um, you know, focused on the the Aguardiente coming off the still at lower strength. All of those things would be nice, but this is a lovely, honest, you know, jobbing rum that would be happy to have in my glass any day of the week. And uh, you know what? I actually still like it more than the Johnny Walker Red. So I'm going to give this... Uh, what am I going to give this? Try it one more time. Um, the fact that it holds on the finish... It isn't a long, super impressive finish, but it's there. Is what is, is going to kind of push me over the top of this. I'm going to give it a 79 out of 100. Um, I think it's really good, actually. No, no, it's not good. It's not good, but it's really solid, and it's hitting. It's 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 delivering what uh, you need from this kind of price point, very very well. Um, again, well done, Columbia. Um, and thank you for not making a mess of this like some of your neighbors are. Okay. And for our last option, Barbados. Doralee's 12. Once more t one more time. Now with some water. Gets a bit more floral with water. It was already very floral before, but now the water is really coming out. Uh, the, the florals really come out a little bit more. So this is the other side of like column distillate, of column distilled molasses based rum. Um, they can be very kind of rubbery and ethanol-y, but at the same time, they can sometimes bring these sort of very nice aromatics, these um, floral hints, uh, slightly herbaceous hints. There is a little bit of like a not mint, almost like a more of a basil sort of note coming through now. Again, not super complicated, but um, this Dorley's is actually d delivering on the nose very nicely. And on the palate. Yeah, it doesn't really improve. It doesn't really develop all that much. But it didn't need to. I mean, this was already very, very solid. And for especially for something bottled at 40%. Best cola in the world meets coffee, meets flowers, honey. A um, little bit of like, uh, like basil kind of going on. Um, pepper. Very solid. Uh, I can't give this more than 83 points, but I will absolutely give this 83 points. Um, and what this really makes me want to do is hunt down a bottle of the new 40% Dorleys, which I imagine will fix all of the problem, a lot of the problems, at least, with um, this current offering. That's nice. So, um, okay, how to put this? So, okay, yeah, the 
the old tub, Ball and Bond. It does win this lineup. But please note, like, there are a lot of bourbons around this price point that are, that are not as good as this. Um, and this Dorley's, despite the fact that the people bring this in, uh, you know, I guess it's total wine these days. Um, I mean, this is this is sub thirty bucks again. Um, are having to pay, you know, importing fees. They're having to like, uh, you know work through a you know a, a not a they're having to basically pay for something that is not domestically produced and yet they are still able to present something at this quality that impresses me um so the fact that this is even coming in second here is uh is is very impressive and i i really need to get a, get the new version of this okay so what do we got here um uh old tub wins uh at 84 points Ooh. And then the, uh, the Dorley 12, 83. The Wild Turkey Rye, which I was expecting to kind of maybe come, maybe uh, sneak up and win this. Only it comes in third at 82 points. Um, 81 points, I'm sorry. 81 points for Wild Turkey. I was thinking about an 82, but it, I couldn't get there. Uh, the Grammy, $8. $8 for this. 80 plus points. Um, and then we got, what else we got? Uh, the the Colombian rum, the Viejo, um, seventy nine points, well earned. Uh, Johnny Walker Red, perfectly serviceable, seventy seven plus. And then this Panama Pacific, which I just I was I started out okay on, and I really really started to not like it, especially with water. Seventy three minus points out of hundred. And uh, that's your that's your takeaway. Uh, American Bourbon might still be winning this, but watch out for, for what rum can do. And, oh my God, $8. $8 for this. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta start taking Georgia more seriously. Um, okay, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. Oh, and, and by the way, uh, please, please join my Patreon and uh, help convince my wife that I can afford to keep doing these. I mean, to be honest, I will probably keep doing these even if you don't give me your money, but uh, I would appreciate the, uh, I would appreciate the help. Thanks for watching and cheers.